Hi, my name is Catherine Huynh, and my topic is the multi-state outbreak of salmonella infections linked to Popeyes. Between January 1st and October 29th of 2007, about 272 people from 35 states were afflicted with salmonellosis from the strain Salmonella 4512I-. A wide range of people were affected, including those younger than 1 to those 89 years old. The people most affected were those around the age of 18. Fortunately, there were no deaths reported. Salmonellosis is the infection of the intestines and bloodstream due to salmonella. Some clinical symptoms include diarrhea, fever, and abdominal cramps within 12 to 72 hours after infection. The mission of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, is to protect America from health, safety, and security threats through conducting critical science. Local and state public health departments collaborated with the CDC to investigate the source of a salmonella outbreak that caused multiple people to become very sick. A strength of the CDC was their thorough response and reporting about the outbreak. They have answers to questions such as, does salmonella make food taste or look different? And are honest when they explained they were not sure how salmonella got into the banquet pot pies, but were investigating it. A weakness of the CDC is the time it takes from when a person eats a contaminated food product, becomes ill, seeks medical help, and when the case is reported to the local public health department. This typically takes two to four weeks total. An opportunity of this situation is the education of the public about handling raw or frozen food. A threat is towards people's health and the credibility of ConAgra foods. If food is continued to not be cooked properly or products are not checked for the highest quality, people will continue to get sick from salmonellosis. Plant A was the only place that produced banquet pot pies from ConAgra foods. Production was halted by October 8, 2007. In a case control study by the, C the CDC, they interviewed pa case patients and many were shown to not have followed the instructions. 77% of 133 patients interviewed cooked pot pies in the microwave. Only a few patients knew the wattage of their microwave. With such a large number of patients who became sick and used microwaves, there is a possibility that the microwave instructions may have been confusing. Therefore, this outbreak was a two-way street. Clear instructions needed to be put on the package, and consumers need to understand that instructions are not universal for all microwaves, that different microwaves have different wattages. The outbreak emphasized the importance of educating the public about food safety with regards to raw or uncooked items. The CDC has guidelines encouraging people to clean their hands and disinfect surfaces, to separate raw meats from cooked items or greens, and to cook food to the in correct internal temperature and to store food properly. ConAgra Foods, the company that distributed the banquet pot pies, fixed the labels and cooking instructions before they resumed production. Instead of a large label saying, ready in four minutes, it said, microwavable, must be cooked thoroughly, see back for, in direct for directions and recommended the usage of a food thermometer to ensure that the pie was fully cooked. The health belief model can be applied in this situation. Perceived susceptibility, or lack thereof, in this was that often those who were of lower economic status were the main consumers of these pot pies because of their cheapness. Despite the warning of not to eat the pie or to throw them away, families who may be struggling to eat may perceive that starving is worse than getting salmonella poisoning. A perceived benefit was that ConAgra Foods believed that issuing a voluntary recall and fixing the cooking instructions would prevent more people from becoming sick. The cue to action was the outbreak of salmonella, which spurred them into action. An alternative is for ConAgra Foods to put conventional oven instructions only, to encourage people to use a conventional oven instead of a microwave. In one study comparing the effects of these two cooking methods, only people who ate reheated meat from a microwave fell ill. The reasoning is that heating meat by conventional methods has a protective effect, evenly cooking food on the surface and in the core. While conventional cooking may take longer, it would kill more bacteria even through even heating of food. Another alternative is for Kong Agro Foods themselves to reform their practices and to take the extra steps necessary to ensure the products are entirely safe instead of relying on the consumer to ensure the product is cooked thoroughly. Treatment plans for decontaminating products during the production chain is a possible idea. One recommendation is to require all food production plants to agree to random quality and safety checks by the USDA's Food Safety and Inspection Service in order to operate. Random checks ensures that proper handling of food reduces the risk of salmonella spreading through contamination by food handlers who don't wash their hands or the usage of contaminated raw products such as beef or poultry in the final product.
My second recommendation is the CDC should partner up with local and state public health departments to advocate about safe food handling. While having resources online is helpful, having physical pamphlets or workshops to help visually educate people about proper cooking reaches out to demographics who don't have internet access. My plan is for the USDA to become more strict with food production companies and to have more authority over the market. By 2024, Congress hopefully will allow the USDA more oversight over the food facility, food industry. By 2025, all food production companies need to sign an agreement in order to operate in the United States. By 2026, all food production companies need to become transparent about their methods of quality assurance and the production of their food. I used to be obsessed with trying Popeyes. Now, I'm slightly hesitant to try them. I love using the microwave because it's very convenient, but my opinion now is that I am much more cautious about items that have uncooked ingredients, and I'm sure to heat them up in the conventional oven and to make use of the food thermometer more often.